Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today I'm going to be taking a look at some test meters that I rescued from a factory clearance. So literally, these are all meters that if I hadn't rescued them, would have ended up in the skip. Now, I was fortunate enough to be invited along to a factory that had closed down, and they had some bits and bobs left over. They asked me if I wanted to come and take a look, if there was anything that would be of use to me before it all got skipped. And lo and behold, in a box in the corner of the factory, I found a few old test meters, which are far too interesting to let them go in a skip. Also got a few other bits and bobs that we can take a look at, including a comb binding machine, which I find fascinating. So let's quickly run through what we've got. So first up is this Mega BM100, an analog insulation and continuity tester. And it's even still got the probes with it. This needs a nine volt battery, this one. It doesn't have a battery in it, which is actually good news because it means there's no chance that the battery's leaked while it's been in storage. It's quite a simple analog meter, this one. I've given it a bit of a clean up. It was quite grimy, but it's way too good to end up in a skip. So this one, clearly from RS, it's a shame the case has kind of delaminated. This does tend to happen on these, but other than that, it's in pretty good shape. It's a 4B phase earth loop tester, this one, and it's even got the instruction manual inside. Fantastic. You know me, I always like to see the original instructions with things. So I'm guessing these were out of use for a while, possibly at the factory where I picked them up in favor of something more modern. But I'm glad they survived to the end for me to be able to pick them up and now make sure they have a longer life than they would have had. What else did we get? We've got an RS logic probe here. Seems to be in pretty good shape. Now this is pretty cool. Battery operated little mega test meter here. Got your terminals on the top there battery compartment on the back, supplied by Precision Instrument Laboratories, this one, it's in really good condition. And another one that comes with a little instruction leaflet. So this is presumably why this is in such good condition, because it was kept inside the case here. And we've even got some test probes with it as well. I'm pretty chuffed with this meter. I think it looks really cool and it's in really good shape. So when I arrived at this factory clearance, there was only a handful of people left there. So the people tasked with the clearance didn't really know what they had on their hands. They just wanted to make sure that it went to good use rather than going in a skip. One thing I find intriguing about this, you've got the cutout in the top there for the terminals and no cutout there. So it clearly has to go in the case this way, but the mega logo is upside down. Maybe the case was designed for a meter that had the terminals on the underneath. Not too sure about that. Unusual, but the case and the meter is in really good condition. Now I've also got this InMac mains monitor, which just plugs into the mains and keeps an eye out for any anomalies in your mains supply. Is there any spikes? Is there any problems with the mains? You can see it's a pretty simple unit. You just got one reset button on there comes with the mains lead. I think we'll give this a try in a minute. So again, it looks to be in really good shape, this one. Mains powered, so no batteries required. And again, we've got some documentation with this one. The InMac mains monitor. There we go, fantastic. They give you some information on there. You've even got a little waveform down the bottom there, what to look out for on your main supply. It's literally just indicated by LEDs on the meter. Okay, so the megas are a little bit beyond my scope here at the moment. So we can have a test of this though. Okay, so we've got the instructions here for the mains monitor. So it says, this requires only two connections, phase and neutral. All monitoring will be performed between these two connections, as most equipment will be concerned with pollution between the phase and neutral lines. Right, so this will tell me if we've got any voltage fluctuations. So let's have a go with this. This seems pretty self-explanatory. I'm not so experienced with the mega insulation testers, so I'm not gonna delve deeply into those at this stage common sense prevails. Right, all indicators will light except the power on lamp which will remain off. Depress and release the reset switch. The power on lamp will illuminate, all others will turn off and the DCD will read zero. So if any indicator other than power on remains illuminated, the relevant condition has occurred. Great, so let's reset. We've got power on, 
we've got no voltage drop out supply voltage is okay and a zero reading here so i would say that the supply that i'm plugged into at the moment is fine so this is designed to be left plugged in and then just checked periodically as the indicator for any of these conditions will remain on and if there's been a total mains failure then the power on light will go off and will remain off even when it's powered back on so you know there's been a problem okay so this is pretty cool so just for monitoring your main supply for any problems i can see where that would be useful all fascinating stuff so amongst the box of test meters was this which apparently came from the inspection department let's inspect what's in the box so we've got some anti-rust paper here you just don't see that these days it's a rather beautiful vernier height gauge this is absolutely gorgeous it's survived in really good condition the rust proof paper obviously doing its job as you can see on the top here it's made by shard low micrometers or micrometers depending on your pronunciation it's a precision instrument and beautifully made I can't believe this was going to go for scrap. Got the calibration sticker on the bottom there from 2003. So it's obviously not been used for a while. It's obviously been sitting in the corner of the inspection office for a little bit of time. But absolutely beautifully made device. Lovely case with it. And what looks like a scribe here as well. And a mount for it. So you've got extras with this and some more of that rust proof paper in the bottom there well no signs of rust anywhere on this this is actually showing less signs of rust than i am so as if that wasn't enough i also picked up an absolutely beautiful comb binder again when i arrived no one actually knew what it was absolutely criminal it was on top of the pile going for scrap so i'm really happy that i managed to save it from the scrapper let's take a look at the comb binder in action Look at this little beauty. This is a Plastitech commercial comb binding machine. This one's made in France and it's absolutely immaculate. You've even got a little drawer on the front there for collecting your hole punching chips. It's a really cool bit of kit. Now it weighs an actual ton, this thing. You've got a control here for adjusting your margins and you've also got individual controls here. If you don't want to punch out all the holes, you can actually select which ones you want to punch and which ones you don't. Now, it might not exactly be tech, this thing, but it's still definitely tech related because it's a great way of binding all your service manuals and other tech information. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to punch the holes for the binding. Now, you can adjust this to your size, whether you're doing A4, A5 or custom size. I'm not going to do them all in one go. So we're going to put half in first. Pull this down, it's like a fruit machine. You can hear it going through. And look at that, perfect. Now, it'll do a good few pages at once, this. This is a pretty decent machine, this one. There we go, beautiful. Okay, so this sits in here. There we go, find the comb in, and you're gonna pull that down. Then we're gonna slot this in here onto the comb right we're halfway there okay that's other half of your manual in fantastic and then all we've got to do is release this lever and there we have our manual fantastic how good's that I could probably have done with a slightly smaller binder comb as there's not a massive amount of pages in this but it'll do the job quite nicely get yourself one of these they pop up from time to time on ebay not necessarily this big and heavy this has come out of a factory remember but you can get smaller ones and they're absolutely great for doing your comb binding you can do all that manually but this just makes it that much easier plus it just looks so cool so I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at these rather lucky factory finds. I'm so pleased that I saved these from going in the skip 
or to the scrappers. Now these are going to go on for a few more years. And these are all far too good and too interesting to be going in a skip somewhere. So as always, thanks for watching and massive thanks to everyone that's been subscribing, sharing, liking and commenting. It's always much appreciated. I'll be back soon with some more videos on retro gaming, test gear repairs and electronics kits. So take care and I'll see you on the next one.